afternoon, I am Sam Clear, and in association with Harvest Tours, I'm excited to at last launch an, a, a youth pilgrimage expedition company that will be saturated in mission, immersion and adventures, each accompanied by the most engaging spiritual guides we can find, from India to Ireland, from places like Peru to Papua New Guinea, from Tonga to places like Uganda, in fact from over 20 unique destinations around the world. The key is the mix of experiences, like immersions into the local culture, hands-on mission in orphanages and underprivileged communities. Adventures like whitewater rafting, swimming with whales, or even summit climbing. But all with authentic spiritual formation from engaging chaplains and dynamic young leaders. As we'll be catering for both school groups and various young adult tour departures, we genuinely believe that these encounters will reset each young person's life compass. For me, I walked 15 and a half thousand kilometres around the world on foot between 2006 and 2008. And it totally smashed my perspective on life and opened up doors that I seriously didn't even know existed. Right now, I am so excited to be launching and heading up a brand new company in association with Harvest's CEO, Phil Ryle. It's all about providing you with greater opportunities to encounter the love of God in people and in places while having the absolute time of your life. This is about breaking down social barriers. It's about taking new ground and embracing our roles in the church. It's about knowing where we're going because of where we've been. Welcome to Inroads. Whether you're involved in education, with a diocese, your parish, or you individually want to get involved, please visit us online at inroads.net or simply come and find me. Tall guy with a flag. Now, I look forward to seeing you somewhere else in the world very soon, but uh, for that matter, how about this Sunday night at the Vicente Calderon Stadium where the past legends of Spain will take on an all-star Europe uh, soccer, in a, uh, soccer spectacular where our very own Sydney pilgrimage group uh, pilgrim, uh, Christian Botolico, will actually take on a cast of international pilgrims in a half-time penalty shootout. Now, one lucky group will receive seated tickets to this... <laughs> Don't about that, that's out of time with what we're doing, it's pausing. One lucky group will receive seated tickets to this, uh, this particular event, the big soccer match, and that lucky group is, courtesy of Inroads, the entire Harvest delegation. Official tickets, official tickets will soon be delivered to your places of accommodation. We hope that you enjoy today's gathering. Buenas tardes and de los, de los bendiga. God bless. Cheers.
How's everybody going? Awesome. Lovely to be here. Praise Jesus. How's everybody feeling? Wonderful. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for having us. We're the Revelations from Sydney. And my name's Gary Pinto. We hope you have a wonderful time in Madrid. And each day getting closer and closer to our Lord through Our Lady. And um, yeah, this is a few songs before we introduce Father Robert Galea.
This song's good. And through the cross, all of our sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. So we sing in honor of our saint, Mary MacKillop, and give glory to Jesus that we are all saints in the making, that God has called us to be his witnesses throughout the ends of the earth, that God has called us individually, each by name. He says, fear not, 
for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. We are his. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Praise you, Jesus. sacrifice you lived your life and in God's will you found your delight child of God bright of Christ Jurumen shining light through his cross you showed Hope to everyone shining in the heart of the great southern land. Saint Mary is your name. The angels rejoice through your life. You Sing St. Mary. St. Mary is your name. The angels rejoice through your life. You proclaim the name above all names. Say, G'day Australians. 
My name is Jack. And my name is Kiri, and we will be your MCs for today's Australian gathering. Now, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Before, uh, just you know, a word of warning, unless you have, of course, already done it, please switch your mobile phones to silent before we continue with anything. So thank you for that. Kiri, yes. how lucky are we to be gathered in here, in beautiful but hot Madrid, to celebrate our faith in Jesus Christ and to kick off this World Youth Day week as an Australian group. And not just that, but how lucky are we to have the World Youth Day cross and icon with us today? Kiri, yes. but don't forget the awesome music. Oh, of course, yes. Now, before we continue with the Australian gathering, I'd just like to offer a warm welcome to our special guest, Australia's ambassador to, to Spain, Zorica McCarthy, and of course to her crew as well. And a big warm welcome to any other international friends who might be with us today. Standing up here, I can see thousands of beautiful Australian faces. But, Kiri, I'm curious as to know, where do these faces come from? Absolutely. So, how about by making as much noise as you can, let's give it up if you have come all the way from Western Australia. Thank you. Okay, how about this time? If you have come all the way from South Australia. Okay, now how about we're moving up to the top. So this time, let's cheer as loud as you can if you've come all the way from the top of Northern Territory. Okay, and thank you. So from the top, we go to the bottom. How about, let's give it up, if you are from the beautiful island of Tasmania. <laughs> All right, now, what about, I know this next group might be a little bit smaller than the other ones, but I'm sure they make up for it in spirit. So give it up, I want to hear you go as loud as possible. Who here is from the ACT? <laughs> See, I told you they make up for it in spirit. Okay, now, this next group. I might be a little bit biased, and I know they can make so much noise. But let's give it up. Come on, guys, don't let me down. Who here is from the one, the only, Queensland? Okay, that was impressive. But if you are from the most beautiful state of Australia, please, Make some noise, all Victorians! <laughs> Thank you, Victorians! <laughs> Thank you, Victorians. Now, that was impressive. That was. That was. But I think I would like to hear the roof raised 
if you hosted the last World Youth Day and, and, <laughs> New, oh, South New South Wales! Thank you, New South Wales. You are a rowdy bunch. <laughs> Thank you, New Thank South you Wales. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> we should have expected that, really. Okay. Now that you are all officially warmed up, let's officially begin today's Australian gathering. So I would like to please, please welcome to the stage Australia's ambassador to Spain, Zorica McCarthy, to officially welcome us to Madrid. Good afternoon. <laughs> Your Eminence, Australian bishops, and to the thousands of beautiful Australians, primarily young Australians, gathered here today, I welcome you to this wonderful country of Spain, a historic heartland of Catholicism, to the city of Madrid, which you will find, I know, big-hearted and warm-hearted in its welcome to you in its role as host of World Youth Day. It is immensely moving that as you're all gathered here today, shoulder to shoulder, or as the Spanish say, elbow to elbow, you rejoice both the uniqueness of your nationality and the universality of faith. It's very impressive. <laughs> to me and to others in the embassy, including Tony Pobji, our consul, who's here. It is a matter of great pride that the Australian contingent to World Youth Day is both high level and so numerous and so enthusiastic. The, the spirit and the enthusiasm and the joy and the national pride that I see here today uh, are extremely touching. I commend you for it. In the hope that we might be of some assistance to you, I should mention that we are manning a desk in the foyer from 8.30 to 4.30 each day until close of business Friday, as it were, and if you have any needs or queries, please, please don't feel free to stop by. Uh, I'd, I would like simply, again, to say what a wonderful experience this is for me and I know for Tony. Um, the Australian flag is flying high at this World Youth Day, as it has at all others and as it will again in the future, I'm sure. It's, it's very moving, very striking, 
and I wish you the best World Youth Day that you can possibly have and a wonderful week in, in Madrid. Thank you. Thank you, Zorica, and again to your team for all your support throughout the week. I would now like to invite the President of the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference, Archbishop Philip Wilson, to quickly welcome us and to also lead us in an opening prayer. Sisters and brothers, I'm really humbled to uh, be the person to welcome you to this celebration today. It's a great honour for us uh, to be here together as we celebrate World Youth Day here in Madrid, living on the memory of our gatherings in Sydney that were so beautiful and had such a terrific influence on the life of our faith in our country. When I woke this morning, there was somebody on my mind, and in my welcoming remarks today, I need to mention him. That's Bishop Joseph Grech. Who, who has been such a tremendous influence upon the young Catholics of Australia. And I'm sure that Joe is here with us in spirit and with his prayers, ensuring that uh, we will have a wonderful time together, but that it will really be a time of faith for us. It's very important that we gather today around the icon and the cross. There's a feature of icons which is very important and teaches us a lesson about what's expected of us as we journey through life on our journey of faith. Icons are not simply pictures that are made overnight. Icons are regarded as being special pictures because they somehow or other mediate the presence of God in our life. When we see an icon, we honour it and often by kissing it, recognise the presence of God. But icons are made systematically step by step, by a process not only of art, by a process of faith. Icons are reminded to us about what happens to us as we become icons of Jesus as we live in the world. Step by step, day by day, with his love, Jesus shapes us to be an icon of him so that we are able to radiate his presence by the way that we live our lives. The World Day Cross is a cross, not a crucifix, because it doesn't bear the image of the dead body of Jesus. And that's highly significant too, because it's a reminder to us that if we are to live out our faith and our discipleship of the Lord, we must be prepared to mount the cross ourselves. We have to share with Jesus this experience of dying and rising to life. And he reminds us as we journey through our lives that this is not something to be afraid of as we go through the process of death and rising, death to self, rising to God, death to self, rising to love others, then we become more and more secure in our life and in our faith. So my hope is that while we're here in Madrid over these days, that it will be an occasion for all of us to experience Jesus anew that in our days of journeying together now during this World Youth Day, we will discover the truth that Jesus loves us, invites us to share his cross, and assures us that if we are willing to take up the cross, then we will be able to do beautiful things for him in the world. So may this be our prayer as we begin our celebration today, and may it be the prayer that we live out together in this wonderful opportunity of being together in faith and love as we experience World Youth Day together here in Madrid in 2011. Let us pray. God our Father, send the power of the Holy Spirit upon us that we may be faithful witnesses in the world to the mission of Christ. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Archbishop Wilson.
We would now like to please ask every single Australian bishop in the room to please stand up. We just want to show you, we would just like to show you our appreciation of your work and commitment and example as Christ's leaders, not only here in Madrid for World Youth Day, but in life in general. So thank you very much. In Australia recently, we have been so blessed to have so many faith-filled celebrations. It only feels like yesterday that we were all sleeping under the stars in Sydney, celebrating Mass with our Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI. And not just that, but last year, we finally celebrated the canonisation of Australia's first saint, Saint Mary of the Cross MacKillop. Let's face it, we're pretty lucky to be Catholics in Australia at this time. Tell me about it. In saying that, I think it would be worth taking just a moment to reflect on the sacredness of how lucky we are. today to talk to us about her experiences at World Youth Day 2008. Please welcome to the stage Cheryl Fernandez. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses till the end of the earth. This was a theme for World Youth Day 2008 and for many of us, something stirred within and is the, re and is the reason that we have come back for World Youth Day in Madrid. My name is Cheryl Fernandez and I have just walked in the footsteps of Jesus with the Exodus tour on Bus B. The 
there have been numerous highlights on this pilgrimage, but one that stood out for me was climbing Mount Sinai. I thought, if Cardinal Pell can go on a camel, so can I. So I mounted this camel with great difficulty and was happy to have a young boy as a guide to lead me all the way. It was 1 a.m., pitch black, but the stars lit the sky. Then my guide disappeared, and it was just me and this camel. I started to panic, but then something came over me. Be not afraid. I go before you always. And I knew God was with me and always is. For the remainder of the camel ride and climbing 750 steps and walking all the way back for four hours, I knew God was with me. It didn't mean it was easy. It was still a struggle. But I made it. Just like the young Order of Malta, who, who are a group with di disabilities who face numerous challenges every day, but turn their challenges into moments of triumph. And this brings back memories of 2008. I was so excited to have World Youth Day in my hometown. But this brought its own struggles as a group leader, trying to keep everyone together and making sure we all met on time. But the final mass, when one million people gathered and everyone was excited to see the Holy Father, there was crying, laughing, noise everywhere. Being a teacher, I thought, good luck getting the crowd quiet. And then the Mass started, and the Pope began to speak, and a hush fell over the entire crowd. People joined in hymns. They joined in the Mass in their own languages. On one side of me, there were people from Africa. On the other side, India. In front of me, Americans. And all of a sudden, the word Catholic the meaning of universal church came alive. This was where my faith journey changed. I tried to go to mass twice a week. I became more involved with my youth group. I started to share my faith with others. I wanted to be involved with World Youth Day 2011 and became Joint Ramwick Botany Deanery Coordinator. I started to study my master's in religious education and this year I became pastoral care coordinator at my school because I wanted to share my faith. These were just some of the wonderful things that happened to me at World Youth Day and I can't wait to see the impact that this one will have. I remember the Australian gathering in Germany and now I'm in Madrid sharing my journey. I am really excited about this week and I hope you all have a great time. Some of you might be confused why you're here, but there is a reason God wanted you here. Because when we get back to Australia, we are gonna change it one step at a time. I hope you all have a lovely, fruitful, prayerful, World Youth Day week. She will worship 
every nation, every tribe come together to worship you. In your presence we delight, we will follow to the ends of the earth. October 2010, Australia witnessed the canonization of St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop. Please welcome to the stage Jonathan Zarb to share with us how St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop has been a part of his life. In Sydney, on Mary McKillop's grave is inscribed, trust in God. 
we're all here for different reasons on pilgrimage. We've all had our own experiences of trusting in God in our own lives. Today, in the, in the next couple of weeks, we might be called to trust in God as we continue to journey on pilgrimage. My experience of trusting in God starts in 2008 when I signed up to do a year of ministry with Net Ministries Australia. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I left my family and my friends in Canada to come, yeah, Canada! I left my family and friends in Canada to come to Australia for one year of ministry. I used to be a professional chef. I had a career ahead of me, and I decided to do this one year just for one experience. Two weeks into my training in Brisbane, anybody from Brisbane? I experienced God in a big way. And during personal prayer, I really experienced those words, trust in God. I didn't realize that trusting in God would lead me to be working in the Archdiocese of Melbourne. Melbourne, anyone? For the last four years. Mary McKillop, I had no idea, was the person who said, trust in God. Mary McKillop lived her life in service to the church. Mary McKillop lived her life constantly trusting in the providence of our Lord. From NET, I started working at a Josephite school, Panola Catholic College in Broadmeadows in Victoria. And really, I got to experience what Mary McKillop really believed and lived. Now, it was really my dream. I really wanted to go to the canonization of Mary McKillop to really praise God, to, to praise and thank Mary McKillop for that opportunity to, to have that opportunity of, of understanding, trusting God. Sadly, I wasn't able to go. But I know that this cross right here was at the Australian gathering um, the day after the canonization. Mary of the Cross McKillop lived her life in total faith. My prayer for each of us and my prayer for me is that we can continue to live by the cross. From the cross comes new life. The life we're experiencing here at World Youth Day is beyond what we can, beyond what can, we, what we can imagine. We have to take this energy and support each other as we head back to Australia, back to our parishes, our schools, our communities, and really share this love. Mary McKillop also said, we are but travelers here. And as we travel through Madrid, as we continue to travel wherever we're gonna go next or wherever you've been, I pray that you continue to keep Mary McKillop close to your heart. Mary of the Cross McKillop. The challenge, pray for us, yeah. The challenge for us also comes from Mary McKillop and her challenge is never see a need without doing something about it. We can't just take our faith, take our experience from World Youth Day and go back and hide it under a bushel basket. We have to take what, we, what we've experienced here and do something about it. Social justice is such an important part of the heart of Mary McKillop, working in underprivileged under areas. That might be in our own families, with our friends, in the greater community. Our faith is not complete unless we help those in need. So our challenge today is to really trust in God and to never see a need without doing something about it. Teach more by example than by word is another thing that Mary McKillop said through our lives, through the example of who we are, through the way we live our lives, that's the best way of teaching. So St. Mary McKillop, pray for us. Thank you to both Cheryl and Jonathan for sharing their stories. And it, it's so good to hear the different experiences that people have had from these incredible moments in Australian Catholic history. And it just serves as a reminder really that everyone here in Madrid is going to walk away with their own memories, different to the person beside them. That is right. We have received power through the Holy Spirit. We are now witnessing, and here we are at the other end of the earth. Of course, we will all take away memories from this World Youth Day meeting the Holy Father for Mass, and also pilgrims from all around the earth. 
but we will also take away the moments of reflection, those times of prayer. So now, let us all come together and pray as Australian pilgrims through the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop. I could not lay it down for all the world could give. The cross is my portion, my sweet rest, and my great strength. The cross is my portion, and I will not lay it down. Yeah. 
Jesus, our friend, may we be prepared to listen. Let the Spirit be on us as we hear your word. Jesus, our neighbour, may we be prepared to speak. Liberation be announced among us. Jesus, our Saviour, may we be prepared to act. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When he came to Nazareth, where Jesus had been brought up, Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus of Nazareth, you returned to the place where you were brought up. People in the synagogue approved with astonishment 
as you interpreted the prophecy of Isaiah. Although they heard you, they failed to listen. They heard only what they wanted to hear. The truth hurt them. You made them feel uncomfortable and they rejected you. For our world today, there remains some uncomfortable truth. The good news has still to reach the afflicted. Captives still await liberation. Sight has still to be restored to the blind. The oppressed has still to go free. And proclaiming a year of favor has been missed. And millions of people have plunged further into the mire despair and poverty. Even now, you are being rejected because people refuse to listen. Our fellow humans suffer rejection. They are dying because they are victims of oppression, imprisoned for their beliefs of discrimination, driven down by the world's trading rules of prejudice, condemned by their color or gender, of poverty, and enslaved by unjust economics. Walking through the hostile crowd, you began your journey towards the cross. The journey to the cross was a journey beyond death towards triumph and resurrection. We want to walk with you at the risk of ourselves being rejected. Lord, you come to proclaim recovery of the sight to the blind, to open the eyes of the oppressed and oppressor. Give us now your strength to work in solidarity with the poor and the courage to open our eyes to the injustices of our own lifestyles. Lord, hear us. Lord, you came to bring good news to the poor, to speak against injustice. Give us now the strength to support the oppressed as they speak out and challenge their rulers and the international community. Lord, hear us. Lord, you came to proclaim release to the captives 
and to set the oppressed free. Help us together to break the chains that bind us and transform them into a chain of solidarity. Lord, hear us. Lord, show us how we may seek your kingdom and help to bring peace to a troubled world. Only by walking with you will we come to understand the joy of resurrection. Jesus came and came among us and said, Peace be with you. Incredible. Jesus is here, here among us. He is with us again. No need to fear. No need to hide away. We can get on with life. Go fishing again. Go meet the people again. Let's go. Jesus said, so we say to each other, peace be with you. 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 An invitation, friends. Well, a, a challenge. Jesus sends his disciples. He invites his friends to go out, out into the world. He gave them his spirit to be their guide, to, to be their courage, to be their wisdom in life. The spirit parting gift to us, a gift to be used, a gift to enable them to continue the mission. This invitation is for us too, for we have been anointed and sent.
love you is to serve you. To know you is to love you. To love you is to serve you. To know you. To know you is to love you. Is to love you. To love you is to serve you. To know you. To know you is to love you. To love you. And together we pray. You call us, Lord, to share your life, to follow where you lead, to live as you live, to love as you love, to preach the good news of God's kingdom, of justice and joy, of peace and hope. Come into our lives, Lord. Open our hearts, broaden our minds, strengthen our convictions. Lead us the way you want us to go so we too may be your disciples in the world. Amen. Good afternoon. I don't know about you, but sometimes there are people that come across in our lives that inspire us. I don't know if you know, have anyone that inspires you. But it's so good to be inspired. And one person that inspired me so much and brought me to where, basically where I am today, is Bishop Joe Gregg. A very inspirational man. One thing that I learned from Bishop Joe and the, the passion that is in my heart through the ministry, I've been a priest for nine months now. And it's been an amazing journey for me. It was a sad time when Bishop Joe died, but you know what, my heart is on fire because I captured the vision that Bishop Joe had. And that vision was to, to let people know that they are beautifully and wonderfully made. That you, each one of you, were created in the image and after the likeness of God. Wow. And one banner that he used to have over his head were the words, God, does not make rubbish. Wherever he went, he used to say those words. And one, one summer I was with him in his summer house and we're bored. So we decided to write a song together. And I'm gonna sing this song to you. I actually did record this song and I got Bishop Joe into the studio with me. And it ended up being... It is a song that is probably the worst song I've ever written. I used to tell Bishop Joe this. But it's something so, it has such an amazing message. Such an amazing message. If only we understood, as Bishop Joe used to say, that God does not make rubbish. So I'm going to teach this song to you. It's very basic. So it goes like this. God does not make rubbish for God calls us his own can you sing that with me God does not make rubbish God does not make rubbish for God Calls us his own. Okay, now there's another piece. 
very profound lyrics. I'm going to say, I'm going to say the words na 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 na, and you're going to shout hey. Okay, can we try that? Na 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 na. Okay, now when you say hey, just lift your hands up. Just don't slap the person next to you. Okay, in the face. So na 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 can stand up Try instead of yeah, instead of the hey, we're gonna try something like uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Borat. Okay, so this, so when I say na na na, you're gonna just go high five. Can I try that? Okay, and just high five the person next to you. So I'll try. Na 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 na, high five. Na 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 na, high five.
thank you. A big thank you to everyone for leading us in prayer. A big thank you to everyone for leading us in prayer just now. And of course, a big thank you to Father Robert as well for your beautiful words of Bishop Greg. <laughs> and, and your beautiful music as well. It's certainly not a terrible song. We love it. <laughs> now, Jack. Kiri. After Madrid. Yes. After World Youth Day 2011. Yes. When, you know, we're back home and in our everyday lives. Yes. What happens? What, what do you mean? Well, what happens to like all that good World Youth Day stuff going on inside ya? I don't know. Neither do I, but I know someone who does. So please help me welcome Australia's Senior Youth Ministry Project Officer, Malcolm Hart, to the stage to talk to us about a call to action. G'day, everyone. Before our wonderful prayer and tribute to the late Bishop Greg, we listened to some of the great moments in the life of our church over the last three years. These great events have been momentous movements of the spirit. But there's been much, much more occurring and there's still more to come. In 2009, the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference launched a statement called Anointed and Sent. This statement identifies an Australian vision for Catholic youth ministry and therefore a vision and hope for young people in Australia. Anointed and Sent identifies three goals for those who minister in, with young people, three areas for them to provide guidance and formation. Therefore, it identifies three areas in which you, the young people of Australia, are called to deepen your understanding and practice of faith. The first goal, or hope, is that each young person fosters a lifelong personal and spiritual journey a hope that each young person proactively seeks out to deepen their relationship with Jesus Christ. As young Catholics, you are called to be in relationship with Jesus Christ through prayer and action, through the healing power of reconciliation, the reflection on the Word of God, and the nourishment of Eucharist. You are called to strive for a deeper and personal relationship with Christ. This goal resonates with the theme of this World Youth Day. You must be planted, grounded, rooted in Christ, firm in your faith. But we all know there are many obstacles, many distractions and real life situations which make this difficult. But just remember, Christ is with you, loving you unconditionally. But our faith calls for more than this one-to-one -one relationship with Christ, which leads us to our next goal, which is that each young person participates in the life, mission, and work of the Catholic faith community. As Catholics, we believe that Christ is inside each of us and that to deepen our relationship with him, we need to be in relationship with each other, to see Jesus in those around us. Our Catholic faith communities, whether in parishes, movements, religious orders, schools, families or youth groups, all serve as places where a stronger link can, with God can be nurtured, a place where we can discover and develop our Catholic identity. As Catholics, we draw strength from the community of believers and the communion of saints, which is lived through our celebration of the Eucharist our church's greatest prayer. Our faith communities are where we can learn more about the Mass, be apprenticed in liturgical ministries, and come to a deeper understanding and love of the Eucharist. At the end of Mass, we are told, go and announce the Gospel of the Lord, which leads us to our final goal. That is, that each young person lives as a disciple of Jesus Christ in our world today. 
This is the heart of the church's mission. We must be the presence of Christ in the world today to fulfill our baptismal call. As disciples, we, we must take our place in the circumstances of daily life. With Christ, change these circumstances for the better, building the kingdom of God here on earth. We must be the head, the heart and the hands of Christ in our daily life. We must be witnesses. Like blessed Pope John Paul II, the Australian bishops, your youth ministers, your teachers, your friends, all who walk this journey with you, call you to take up your place in the life of the church and to be the living presence of God in our world today. As young Catholics of Australia, you are called to deepen your relationship with Christ, be supported by and support in return the communities of faith from which you come, and to be the living presence of Christ in the world today. Use your time this week to learn more, to pray more, to be more, so that upon your return to your homes and your communities, you can be the radiant light of Christ, you can be his witnesses. But remember again, you are not alone. Since 2007, the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference has been working to respond to your participation in our church. This response has included the establishment of an Australian Catholic Youth Council, a full-time ministry position within the Bishops' Conference, and a significant local investment and activities. I would like to conclude by identifying two national initi initiatives of significance. In 2010, the Australian Catholic Youth Council held the inaugural Australian Catholic Youth Ministry Convention in Melbourne. This was a great success with over 400 people attending over the three days. We now have another convention planned for September 21 to 22, 2012 in Campbelltown in the Diocese of Wollongong. This event is for anyone who is in ministry with young people. An opportunity for training, support, resourcing and networking. So come along and find out what others are doing and how you can create a more youth friendly and inclusive community. Finally, over the past 18 months, under the direction of Bishop Grech and now Bishop Prowse, the Australian Catholic Youth Council has been researching the possibility of an Australian Catholic Youth Gathering an opportunity for young people to come together and celebrate their faith and to be inspired within the church in Australia. This is significant work and significant risk is involved. If it is to occur and be successful, we need your support, your participation and your willingness to promote and encourage as many young people as possible to attend. It would be your event, so I ask that you keep this proposal and research in your prayers during this week and over the coming 12 months. Thank you for listening today. On pages four and five of your Pilgrim Journal are the goals that I've identified. There is also a reminder to stay connected with your Pilgrim Group leaders as they can continue to support you beyond this event. I wish you all the best for the week. I look forward to meeting many of you out there on the streets and hearing your stories and encounters with the risen Christ. Thank you. Crikey, wouldn't it be great <laughs> to have a gathering like that in Australia? Please, can we keep it in our prayers? Thank you, Malcolm, for giving us something now to talk about. And that's exactly what we're going to do. What we're going to do now is to give you just a couple of minutes to share with the people around you about what you hope to get out of World Youth Day and to what, how you can maybe get more involved when you get back to Australia. So if you'd like to, there'll be two simple questions up on the screens. So if you want to just turn to the people around you, introduce yourselves and just have a chat about that quickly. So thank you.
So, thank you. Thank you for spending that time getting to know the person next to you and also for sharing a bit of your hopes and dreams. Thank you, everyone. So today, we have been officially welcomed as Australian pilgrims. With awesome music. We, uh, what else have we done? We've prayed and reflected. With awesome music. We've gotten to know a little bit more about each other. With awesome music. I think it's probably about time we uh, wrap this up, don't you think? With awesome music? Maybe later. <sighs> Maybe later. What I was thinking now was perhaps some words from the Australian Bishop's Delegate for you. Bishop Christopher Prowse. So please help me welcome Bishop Christopher Prowse to the stage. Well, the, uh, the awesome music will come later on, but we want to just reflect a little bit about the awesome God that we worship. Is that right, the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Uh, with you, I've been reflecting and listening and participating in this Australian welcome here in this great auditorium. And just before we leave, I just wanted to reflect with you for a couple of minutes about a, a scripture text that came to my mind as I was listening carefully. Almost every song, every hymn, uh, every testimony, and also visually with the cross and icon, the, the morning has been about the cross of Jesus Christ. It's come into everything. The cross of Jesus Christ is our salvation. No resurrection without the cross. And through the cross comes the resurrection. And at all times, Mary, the mother of God there, pondering and treasuring all that has been taken part and leading us as first amongst the faithful. You know, there's a passage from the gospel that came to my mind when I was listening this morning. The, the two men, the two young people, it wasn't World Youth Day here in Madrid, but it might have been World Youth Day Jerusalem. Two men going from the cross to a place called Emmaus. You know the, the great story from Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. But there's, a, there's two parts to this story, and there's two parts to our World Youth Day too. It depends on our attitude, and our attitude as we go into this sea of Catholic world in a few minutes it's got to be really strongly based on the attitude of the gospel, not of the attitude of a, of a world that's so confused and sort of all about me, the me world. This is the gospel world that you and I are in. Because those two men on the road to Emmaus, when they first left, they were a real loser team. They are the we had hoped team. They were dragging each other down the more that they were going away from the cross. They had their back to Calvary, as I have my back to the cross now. And they were moving away to some place, Emmaus, whatever it was. And they were talking to each other, dragging each other down in pessimism and negativity, almost wanting to help each other to despair and to lose hope. We had hoped, they said, when uh, they didn't know it, but Jesus himself came amongst them. What are you discussing? We had hoped, they said that this Jesus who we'd been following would deliver us from whatever, but he's, he's been butchered on the Calvary cross. We had hoped. Despairing, we're running away from the cross. We're just going to mix with the majority of the godless world who sort of thinks that God's not important to happiness. You can be happy without God. We've, we're going to join them because we had hoped that he would give us something, but he hasn't given it. And Jesus said to them, he rebuked them, and, and he rebukes that attitude in us. You foolish men, you foolish people who believe that in God there is no hope. The more you run away from the cross, the more you will become despairing. The more you'll wake up in the morning here at Madrid and say, the showers were cold, the breakfast, there's no cornflakes, it's all these coffee and cakes. My feet are sore, there's too much walking. My pilgrim leader is bossy. Those people from New South Wales make too much noise. <laughs> we had hoped. 
And then Jesus talks to them and then they have the meal, which we now see 2,000 years later, which is the Eucharist. While they were there, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them, and they recognized him. It is the Lord. The Eucharist was the conversion experience for them. Right there, before they even paid the bill, they turned around. Now, their bodies were facing the very area where they ran away from, Calvary. They ran towards the cross, towards Mary at the foot of the cross. They went there, right to the cross. And then they went and told the brethren, told the others, the emerging church, that our hearts burned within us as he talked to us. They had become the heart burn people, not the we had hoped people. There's the choice, everybody, as we now go out into World Youth Day Madrid. There's the choice. And there's the choice when we leave Madrid and then go back to Australia. Will we, in our attitudes, be the we had hoped people or our hearts burn in Jesus people? Let us now, as we leave this place in a few minutes, become what we, God wants us to be, planted and built in Jesus Christ, our hope, and become for the world, particularly in Australia when we go back, the hearts burning in Jesus Christ people. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Prowse. What a fantastic gathering this has been. It really could not have happened without the dedicated work of so many people. And not just that, but the fact that we are looking at over 3,000 Australian pilgrims in Madrid right now is testament to many hardworking, dedicated people as well. Absolutely. I would like to take this opportunity to really show our appreciation for all of those people who have put so many hours into the preparation for this World Youth Day 2011. May they please stand up. Also, also, we would like to thank everyone who has helped coordinate Australia's participation in World Youth Day 2011. That includes the Bishops' Conference, the National World Youth Day Committee and Harvest Pilgrimages. So thank you. I would also like to give a big thank you to all the volunteers, all the readers, all the presenters, all the musicians, and to my fellow MC, Kiri. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, back at you, Jack. <laughs> also, there are three Australian festival acts that will be performing throughout the week of World Youth Day, so make sure that you go along and support them, and you may even see one of them performing in the lead up to the vigil later in the week. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> What I would also like to tell you guys is that this arena for the World Youth Day Week, 15,000 seats, <laughs> air-conditioned, <laughs> is going to be a hub for us English speakers. It's going to contain catechesis, prayer, musicians, and talks. So I encourage you, now that you know where it is, to please come back. Also, after today's gathering, uh, there will be a press conference at 2.30. So if you're a blogger, a media representative, uh, you're invited to come and meet next to the Harvest desk and you'll be escorted into the media room. Also, if you're a leader and need to pick up your Harvest phone or a leader of simple accommodation, can you please gather at the Harvest desk? It's on the left, I think, somewhere. <laughs> Um, also, any volunteers or performers, sorry to make so many announcements, but any volunteers or performers who have anything in the green room, can you please go straight away after the event to go get it? Thank you, so we can, so the next event can begin. Now, there are 
Uh, also, that's right, there, is an Australia, there will be an Australian presence in the foyer throughout the week of World Youth Day as well. So please make sure that you come back. And of course, another big thank you to the Knights of Columbus and the Sisters of Life for organising the venue today and allowing us to be here. Thank you. So to finally wrap up today's Australian gathering, I would like to now welcome Cardinal Pell to the stage for a final blessing and prayer. Well, my, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, fellow pilgrims, before the final blessing, I would just like to make uh, two points. First of all, I would like uh, to endorse all the words of thanks to those who have organized these uh, two hours of prayer and music and witness. They've done a great job. I'd like to thank uh, all, all the performers and uh, also our two Masters of Ceremonies. They've, done, they've also done a great job. There's no doubt we have truly followed the cross from the ends of the earth. We have come from the other side of the world following the cross, the great symbol of redemptive love and following that ancient uh, Roman image of Mary, uh, the mother of God. We should uh, remember that these uh, worth World Youth Day pilgrimages are some of the biggest peacetime uh, movements of young people in history. They are miracles of grace. Most times when hundreds of thousands of people are on the move, it is for reasons of war and destruction and killing the extension of power. We follow, we follow a, a message of love, redeeming love, uh, forgiving love. We thank the Lord that, uh, that we know him, that we know that God loves us, that we know about the reality of forgiveness, that we know uh, about uh, the mother of God who loves us and cares for us. So if you could all stand uh, uh, now for the final blessing, we should pray that uh, during these days, we shall use the moments of silence to attempt to open the eyes of our heart to the great mystery of love. For most of you, perhaps nearly all of you, these will be some of the greatest days of your life. Especially if you're young and busy and distracted, use the moments of silence to pray. If you're not quite sure how to pray, ask one of your priests, one of your leaders, perhaps even one of your bishops. So let us pray. Almighty God, Father of love, you sent your only Son into the world to be its true light. Pour out the Spirit he promised us so that we may continue his mission of love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Lord God, bless and strengthen your pilgrim people that they may remain faithful and serve you with all their hearts. Protect your people that they may joyfully bear witness to Christ before the world. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forward now to announce and to live the gospel. everyone. Thank you everyone and make sure you have an absolutely fantastic World Youth Day week.
let's let them know that we are proud Catholic Aussies. Hasta luego. See you later. <laughs> I came to dance, 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 dance. I hit the floor, cause that's my plans, 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 plans. I'm wearing all my favorite brands, 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 brands. Give me the place for both my hands, 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 hands. Yeah, yeah, and it goes on and on and on. And it goes on and on and on. Yeah. I throw my hands up in the air sometimes. I'm in the club, so I'm gonna 